Jenna comes back to her dad's hometown in Ireland years after leaving it to pursue her career dreams. She runs into her ex, Charlie, while she's engaged to Dave, who is more successful. Jenna welcomes a couple on their honeymoon to Dalkey's O'Hanlon's Inn. Her boyfriend, Charlie, has a surprise for her last day in Ireland. She expects something more creative than flowers and chocolates, and he doesn't disappoint. He makes sure she has her favorite Irish snack, Krog's Crisps. Jenna's to-do list just involves saying her goodbyes now. Charlie convinces her to take a break and brings her to the surprise party. Charlie has planned this with his father, Patrick, who is also Jenna's employer. Jenna's best friend, Catherine, offers to bake anything special, so Jenna will be tempted to stay back. Jenna gets called for a farewell speech and thanks everyone at the inn for the last year of her internship. She has felt at home, and she thanks Patrick for being an amazing mentor. She also feels grateful to Charlie, who does so much for her. Well, he is perfect. Charlie and Liam perform a song and are gearing up for their Europe tour in a week. Jenna hasn't heard back from the job she applied for in Ohio yet. She knows the training program is competitive, but hopes for the best. Jenna asks Catherine to stop drooling at Liam and make a movie. She drags Catherine along and informs Liam that they both like each other. Jenna gifts Charlie a photo of them with Patrick, and they hang it on the wall. Patrick is glad to have a part of her always at the inn, Patrick thinks of her as family and asks her to keep visiting. Dave Jordan from Pugsley Hotels offers Jenna the job she applied for, and she accepts it. Charlie shows Liam a ring he bought for Jenna because he doesn't want to lose her. Liam reminds him that she's leaving, but Charlie seems sure they can make it work. Let's hope they do. Charlie brings Jenna to Brayhead Cliffs and knows she's thinking about her dad's village. Jenna hasn't had the courage to visit it since he passed away, but Charlie is sure she can do it later. Jenna has loved her time in Ireland and knows she's going to miss Charlie. He's about to take out the ring box, but puts it back when she informs him about joining Pugsley. They decide to figure out what they have as they go. This surely sounds convincing. Five years later, Jenna is manning the desk at Pugsley. She's covering it for Peter since she's now managing the hotel. She loves the promotion, but misses the personal interaction with guests. Peter wants her help with a leak in one of the rooms, and she loves the challenge. She examines the hairline crack and promises to get it fixed in an hour. She asks Peter to take Evelyn and Paul to the restaurant for a free meal in the meantime. She can tell Paul is from Ireland from his accent. That's a nice throwback. Paul met Evelyn at a conference in the 70s and asked her to marry him. They've been best friends and business partners ever since. Aren't they perfect? Dave, who is Jenna's boyfriend now, is back from Sydney. He's still flying out to Toronto the next day. They had a trip planned to Botanical Gardens, but he promised to do that next week. He has been managing international clients, which makes him feel more established and settled down. She informs him about Paul and Evelyn, and he feels like she saw a glimpse into their future. She decides to head home early and invites him for dinner. Jenna is enjoying her favorite Irish crisps from the box Patrick sent over. They were her dad's favorites, and it was his birthday that day. It has been 10 years since he passed, and she's watching their favorite home renovation show. She remembers redoing her grandpa's place in Ireland, which was the last project they worked on together. Dave gives her some Irish-themed gifts to surprise her. Corporate wants Jenna to make a pitch about opening a Pugsley Hotel in Ireland. They're impressed with how much she has improved guest relations at the hotel and view her as a rising star. An investor group in Dublin is buying an old hotel and redoing it. She needs to convince these investors that they should choose Pugsley. He has already bought her plane tickets. He has also arranged for her to stay a few days in Dalkey before Dublin, so she can meet her friends. That seems almost perfect. He also proposes to her, and is thinking of Ireland as their destination wedding spot. Liam feels he and Charlie are playing better as they get older. He used to chase a trip to different parts of the world, but now he prefers to be among his people in Ireland. Jenna informs Catherine about her trip to Ireland. She hasn't visited in years because Liam and Catherine eloped instead of having a proper wedding. Catherine hopes Jenna can attend the Heritage Fest at O'Hanlon's. Jenna has a meeting in Dublin at that time, but is glad she'll get to stay with them a few days earlier. Jenna tries to figure out the angle for her presentation, but fails. Molly at the train station wonders if she's in Ireland on business. Molly is visiting family and an old friend in Dalkey, so Jenna is glad they're heading to the same place. Since Jenna is hoping for some inspiration, Molly assures her that good things will come for her. That's probably the sweetest stranger. Jenna surprises Catherine by arriving a little earlier. Catherine is working on too many dessert samples for the festival. She has found Patrick's old family recipes, so the whole town can enjoy them. When Liam meets her too, she announces that she's engaged to Dave. While Catherine is excited, Liam doesn't look too happy. I wonder why. 
he still congratulates her, and Catherine hopes they finally get to meet Dave soon. Jenna knows it has been hard for Dave since the transfer, but is sure he will get along with them, let's hope so. She realizes Liam and Catherine are the only ones on staff and share duties at the inn. She also feels she made the perfect match with them. She surprises Patrick at the front desk, who is glad Charlie has also joined him as a new member of the staff. Charlie and Jenna seem awkward but are cordial with each other. There's something we're missing. He is glad she's successful at Pugsley, which is what he always wanted for her. Charlie is now running the inn with Patrick. He notices the engagement ring and pretends to be happy for her. Jenna claims Dave is a great guy, but doesn't want to brag. Well, this is awkward. Patrick forces her to have dinner with them since it's been a while. Jenna feels Patrick is a superhuman, since he always cooks and handles the inn. Patrick has stepped back a little since Catherine took over as the head chef, but is still helping a lot with the Heritage Festival that weekend. She feels bad she can't make it because of the meeting. Patrick explains that this will be his last season. He's finally retiring after four decades. When Patrick leaves them alone, Charlie is still processing that she's getting married. It would be better if he didn't do it out loud. She understands it's weird for him, but he assures her what they had was in the past. Doesn't seem like it. They discuss Patrick's cooking and how he made Jenna his famous stew when she was homesick one day. She also remembers how he made them the best fish and chips from a catch he made that day. Charlie remembers this was right after their first date. They hiked in the rain and were drenched when they got back. That memory is not awkward at all. Charlie shares that he came back for a bit, but it has been five months. When Patrick decided to slow down and retire, Charlie knew he had to help out. Jenna can tell the inn is struggling because of a lack of guests, but Charlie keeps assuring her he has it under control. Liam almost trips on the stairs, which points out a huge flaw in Charlie's claim. Jenna is surprised to see Molly at the inn, which is in town for the Heritage Festival. Jenna assures her she will love it at the inn. Molly flirts with Charlie and feels he seems familiar. He offers her an upgrade, which is followed by another compliment that makes him blush. She asks about Jenna's presentation, who is still trying to find a unique angle. She remembers her work, and Charlie hopes she finds her inspiration. That almost hurts. Jenna wonders if she should focus on the family side of the business. Catherine reminds her that Pugsley is known for its corporate and business-friendly atmosphere. Jenna only wants to explore better ideas because she wants Dave to be proud. Catherine hopes he will be no matter what since he's her fiancé. We hope so too. Jenna feels Catherine could have warned her about Charlie being back. Catherine admits she didn't say anything, so nothing stops Jenna from coming back. Charlie also joins them and remembers the time they all used to hang out at this cafe. It seems like a bittersweet walk down memory lane. Charlie gets an emergency call about Patrick being in the hospital. Jenna tags along, but Patrick doesn't want them to make a fuss over a sprain. He twisted his ankle on the last step at the inn, where Liam's leg also got stuck. Something really needs fixing. Jenna offers help, so Patrick remembers that there will be a lot of guests that weekend for the festival. Charlie doesn't want to bother her, but she insists on staying back and helping out. Jenna also plans to catch the last train out the next day so she can help more. Charlie is worried about taking over the inn from Patrick. It's a lot of pressure, but Jenna assures him all this is in his blood. She shops with Catherine, and they walk past the castle, which is a popular wedding venue. Jenna loves Kilruddery House, but she feels Dave's style is more modern. She's not very sure, because they haven't had the time to discuss their future. She's also worried about the inn, and thinks Charlie has a lot on his plate. Catherine knows it's worse for Charlie with Jenna around. She knows Charlie had a few girlfriends abroad, but none of them stuck. Since he's trying to settle down, she thinks it must be hard since Jenna is around. They left things unresolved, but Jenna is sure he has his own life to worry about. Let's all believe that for a second. Dave is heading to Dubai next week and asks Jenna about Ireland. She fills him in about Patrick and the inn. He doesn't like that she's spending time with Charlie and had assumed he was on a tour. She assures him what she had with Charlie is ancient history, and there's nothing to worry about, not everyone is convinced. Jenna starts helping out and gets fascinated by the pictures of the guests on the wall. She finds an old photo of Patrick, but Charlie doesn't know the woman he is with. Sounds mysterious. Charlie plans to do more shows with Liam all over town so they can make more money for the repairs. Jenna is already very handy with tools and knows she's better than any professional who can fix the step for free. She asks about what else they need to do before the festival and brings out her pad to take notes. She's impressed with Charlie's thorough list, who felt the need to organize because he has big shoes to fill. Jenna still wants to combine their efforts so they can divide tasks. Charlie brings tea for Jenna when she's still struggling with her presentation. She thinks it's missing a spark, so Charlie suggests she should use her experience at the inn. He feels she can incorporate the changes she made there to make her plan better. She loves this idea and continues working. 
She hears Catherine and Liam working late at night, because they're the only staff. No one wants to admit how badly the inn is struggling for her. Charlie has looked over the budget and just got a letter from the city about their electrical. He feels with the repairs they need and the low guest numbers, it's getting too much for them to handle. He also feels they might have to sell it. Charlie wakes up to find that Jenna has already helped Catherine with the breakfast spread. With the help of his tip last night, her presentation is in a better place. She's incorporating some tips related to what the guests love about the inn. She wants to highlight Pugsley's strengths and some points from O'Hanlon's tradition. Molly joins them, and Jenna discusses how she's freeing up her day to dedicate it to the inn. Charlie remembers she's going back that night and decides to practice music for a while. That must really hurt. Jenna wonders if Molly has met her old friend yet, but she's willing to be patient till she does. Charlie is worried about the inn, but Liam assures him Patrick will think of a solution. He asks Charlie to have some more faith in him. He knows Charlie is also distracted because of Jenna and hasn't told her about the ring yet. Liam feels they're perfect and needs to talk about why things didn't work out between them. Charlie is sure she's happy in her life and doesn't want to bother her. That's too righteous for the second time. Jenna wants to run some errands with Charlie, so he takes her shopping in his old car, Rusty. He's confused about the flowers to pick, but Jenna has already made a list. Rusty doesn't start when they get back, so Charlie suggests they bike down to Patrick's. Jenna gets some old photos of the inn from Patrick that she wants to use for her presentation. She has some ideas for the new Pugsley that can be more like the inn. Patrick is glad she made this trip and asks her to come back soon. Jenna still has a few hours left for her train, so she wants to help Charlie more. Dave informs her that the investors have pushed her meeting. She's supposed to stay in Dalkey for a few more days, which makes Charlie happy. This won't last long, don't worry. Because Dave turns up at the inn to surprise her. He has made a little detour before his trip to Dubai. Does this have something to do with her hanging out with Charlie? Dave still compliments Charlie's inn and asks Jenna to show him around. Jenna takes him to Kilruttery House, but Dave keeps making excuses about why he doesn't like the venue. She has memories with her dad in this place, but Dave feels they should wait before they settle down. He is hoping Jenna will want to travel with him and get married after a few years. Jenna was expecting to marry that year itself, so Dave assures her they can find a mutual date. What a great way to deflect. She shares her concerns about the inn with him and feels like Patrick might have to sell it. Dave feels it's in a great location for business, but Jenna thinks it's more about the history and memories of the place. Dave offers to help them out with her. Patrick assures Charlie they can get some volunteers to help out for the festival. He also has a plan to help when he retires. He can also tell Charlie is distracted because of Jenna. Patrick remembers his first love, who was very patient with him. He never wanted to commit, so he let her go. He regretted it till he got lucky with Charlie's mom. He feels people like him never get a second chance with their first love and feels Charlie should make the most of it. Charlie still doesn't want to do anything because he knows Jenna is happy with Dave. But is she? Charlie overhears Jenna and Dave discussing her presentation. Jenna suggests they should focus on the reliability of the hotel and take a risk by incorporating the traditions of the place. Dave still feels it's more about the brand, and politely dismisses her idea. Jenna heads out to get some air, and joins Catherine and Molly in the cafe. Jenna wants Catherine's famous scone, but she doesn't allow her till she reveals what's bothering her. Molly decides to help her out and admits the old friend she's looking for is actually someone she was in love with. Jenna wonders how they know when they have found the one. Catherine feels it was easy with her and Liam, but feels it should be clear to everyone. It's not that easy, right? When Jenna admits she hesitated after Dave proposed, Catherine lets her have a second. Jenna feels they're on different paths and might be thinking of different futures. Liam informs Charlie that they have some volunteers to help out, but the oven needs fixing. Dave asks them to join for a pint and offers to look at Charlie's books. Charlie knows that with the repairs, they won't have much time to make ends meet. Charlie also points out that the Heritage Festival is their biggest attraction for the year. It still might not be enough to keep them afloat. Dave offers to buy Charlie out since he thinks it will help all of them keep their jobs without worrying about repairs. Patrick wants to consider Dave's offer because he doesn't want Charlie to inherit a burden. Dave fills Jenna in about his conversation with Charlie, who rejected his offer. Jenna knows buying the inn and creating another Pugsley is not a solution. The inn is all about the family and its history. Where have we heard this before? Dave understands he doesn't have a connection with the place like she does. He also realizes corporate wanted her for a reason and asks her to go with the kind of pitch she wants. He also apologizes for overstepping, which she appreciates. That was easy. Dave knows something more is going on because Jenna throws herself into a project when she's processing her thoughts. 
Jenna admits that it bothered her when he offered to buy the inn without talking to her first. That's making her think they have huge issues with communication and haven't discussed their future at all. What a surprise. She loves that Dave is passionate about traveling the world, but she doesn't want to be on the move her whole life. Dave admits he proposed after the promotion because he didn't want to lose her. He assumes she would want to travel with him too. Jenna insists a forced engagement isn't good for either of them since she's looking to find her roots in something permanent. She gives him back the ring and peacefully breaks it off with him. Well, that is some development. The lights go off in the middle of Jenna's work, and Charlie knows the fuse needs replacing. It might take a few hours to fix, so Liam has arranged for a coastal excursion for the guests. Jenna forces Charlie to take her help because she is sure the inn is in trouble. When the lights don't work, Jenna offers to get appliances from the hardware store. Charlie suggests she should spend time with Dave. She informs him about breaking things off with Dave, who is on a flight to Dubai. Don't try to look too happy, Charlie. She still doesn't want to discuss it, so Charlie gives her space. Catherine needs help in the kitchen, so they join her. Charlie accidentally drops flour on Jenna, which leads to a full-on flour fight in the kitchen. That's surely very original. The only thing left on Charlie's list now is getting new guitar strings for his show the next day. Liam offers to cover the desk. Charlie hands Jenna a bag because there's a bit of a hike where they're headed. Sounds like fun. They hike to Flynn's castle where her family is from. She's glad he remembered and brought her there. They get lost on their way to find Rusty, and Charlie doesn't get any service to figure out where to go. Jenna spots her family's farm, where she fixed her grandpa's house with her dad, Jack. Charlie suggests they should ask someone for directions. Gerald offers help, but he also turns out to be Jack's cousin. He invites them in for tea with his wife, Alice. They bought the house years after Jenna's grandpa passed away, and it felt like home instantly. Jenna clearly remembers fixing it with Jack, who wanted to make sure it stayed intact for generations to come. Gerald remembers how Jack was known as the Jack of all trades since he was young. How creative. Alice was friends with Jack too, and she met Gerald while they hung out at Jack's place as teenagers. Gerald remembers the time Jack told him that Alice was perfect for him. He pictured them together forever and asked Gerald not to mess it up. Jenna finds a photo she took of the garden when they finished the renovations. She remembers Jack claiming it was his favorite project since he had her help. She always thought it would be too hard to come back to this house. She also knows she wouldn't have if it weren't for Charlie. Who is Mr. Perfect now? Gerald asks her to keep coming back since she's family. They find Rusty conveniently on their way out, and Jenna knows Charlie must have arranged this meeting. She knows he's familiar with the land, and there's no way he actually got lost. She also knows he scratches his head when he's lying. He admits he might have known about Gerald and Alice, and nudged them in a different direction. She hugs him because she's grateful he helped her feel more connected to her dad. Charlie is all dressed up for his show, and Molly insists Jenna needs to tag along too. When Charlie thanks Patrick on stage, Jenna notices the way Molly is looking at him. She realizes he's the old friend she was talking about and plans to set them up. That's an interesting development. Charlie dedicates a song to a special someone, and it's kind of clear it's for Jenna. She drags Molly towards Patrick after the show, who is glad Molly found her way back to him. Jenna asks Charlie about the song, but he doesn't want to reveal the name yet. He finds the music shop, while Jenna decides to window shop for a bit. She finds some rings she's interested in, but Charlie doesn't want her in the store. There's a good reason, I'm sure. Martha recognizes Charlie, but he pretends she knows him since it's a small island. Jenna asks about some rings, which reminds Martha of the emerald one Patrick bought for a woman's birthstone. This makes them awkward, and they decide to leave. Jenna meets Catherine before heading back to Dublin and discusses the ring with her. Catherine already knows about it because Liam tells her everything. Catherine also knows that Charlie broke it off with Jenna because he didn't want to stop her from living her dreams. He knew the long distance wouldn't work and didn't want her to make a tough choice. That is too sweet. Jenna feels overwhelmed and unsure now because being back in Ireland has brought out a lot of complicated feelings. Catherine remembers what Jenna told her years ago about how she would have a perfect career. Catherine thought she would end up in Rome or Vienna, but feels what she has with Liam is much better. She thinks Jenna might find something like that too. There's a huge storm in Dalkey around the time a lot of people from outside town arrive. Charlie wishes Jenna luck with her presentation and lets her go. Liam thinks there's still time since her cab isn't far away, but Charlie watches her get away again. Jenna gives a powerful presentation about adapting Pugsley to the culture around them, with a lot of photos of Charlie and Patrick. Charlie does his best to help out with the inn in the kitchen. He's surprised to learn Molly is Patrick's first love from the time they were teenagers. Patrick is excited to spend time at the festival with her and thinks it's not too late for Charlie. Let's hope so. 
Jenna informs Catherine that her pitch was a success, and they're already planning a Pugsley in Dublin. She wants to come back to Dalkey, and is planning to catch the last train. She tries to get a ticket, but all trains for the day have been cancelled because of the weather in Dalkey. What a setback. Charlie shows Liam that he bought tickets to Columbus for the next day, so he can try again with Jenna. They've managed to make all the arrangements for the festival, and are hoping for clear skies the next day. Jenna arrives at the inn too, and offers to help Charlie at the desk. Patrick thanks everyone for coming to the Heritage Festival, and asks Charlie and Liam to be on their show. They all celebrate with games and have a lot of fun. Liam decides to play the same song Charlie sang, which he reveals is called Jenna's song. He asks Charlie to dance with her, and she loves that Charlie didn't reveal it sooner. He asks if she can stay back and help him with the inn. She has already made a deal in Dublin about consulting with him. She's still looking for a full-time position and is more than happy to work at the inn. Charlie wants to make sure she's ready for this change, but Jenna is certain this place is where she wants to settle. Charlie shows the ring he always held onto for her. As he proposes to her, everyone is glad to see them kissing and being happy together. 